Cartel bosses are brutal and not to be messed with. Oftentimes they have people to do their dirty work for them, which brings me to Sicarios, or Cartel Assassins. Arguably the most disturbing of these was Jose Rodrigo Arechiga Gamboa, better known as El Chino Antrax. Upbringing. What is it exactly that makes Arachiga Gamboa's story a truly disturbing one? His crime? His vicious nature? Perhaps. For me, the really disturbing thing is that Arachiga Gamboa came from what appears to be a comfortable background. On top of that, he originally wanted a life which seems a million miles away from the world of the cartels. He was born in the Mexican city of Culiacan, the capital of Sinaloa State in 1980. Does the name Sinaloa ring a bell? It's because it is highly significant in the history of drug gangs. But if you don't know about this, I'll tell you more shortly. As I said before, Arachiga Gamboa didn't have it bad as a child. You may think those who get in with the cartels want to escape poverty, and you'd be right. However, some, like Arachiga Gamboa, had other options, yet chose a dark path anyway. His father worked for the government, and his mother was an academic. He wanted to be a pilot, then an architect. This first ambition was cut short by Arachiga Gamboa's psoriasis, a condition that makes your skin red, crusty, and scaly. Did you know serious skin conditions stopped you being a pilot? Me neither. This must have been a blow to a young man looking to soar up into the clouds with the military. As for architecture as a career, well, marriage and children changed all that. Instead of studying, he had to find gainful employment. Time was of the essence. While his family reportedly weren't short of a few pesos, he apparently found it tough to get a foothold financially. So, he went to his neighbors, who just so happened to be the Zambada Garcia family. Father Ismael Mario Zambada Garcia would co-found the formidable Sinaloa cartel. Yes, what's currently the most powerful drug trafficking organization on the planet is named after the state of Arachiga Gamboa's birth. The cartel came into being toward the end of the 1980s, when the young man was just a decade old. Turning to crime, Arachiga Gamboa had a respectable background, but it transpires that the drug cartels were right next door. Ismael Mario Zambada Garcia became better known by his nickname, El Mayo. He was close to the well-known drug boss, El Chapo. Zambada Garcia's sons, Vicente, Ismael, and Serafin Zambada were contemporaries of Arachiga Gamboa and they reportedly knew each other as children, in the way neighbors' kids do. Not long before he approached his future colleagues, the Zambada Garcias, Arachiga Gamboa had been studying architecture. Now he was about to be part of a criminal organization. Reportedly with Vicente's help, he initially facilitated some business before taking the next step and making a life within the cartel. I now want to talk a little bit about Arachiga Gamboa's approach to cartel activity. He may have turned his back on education, but his brain was still very much active by the sound of things. For example, he made an impression by transporting marijuana and cocaine across the Mexican border through legitimate business channels and under the authorities' noses. El Mayo himself apparently liked what he saw, and Arachiga Gamboa was on his way to becoming a permanent fixture of the cartel. If the higher-ups had any doubts about the latest addition to the organization, they needn't have worried. Arachiga Gamboa was displaying a talent for carnage. He was dangerous, creative, and deeply violent. The disturbing story of Los Antrax, as well as the day-to-day -day business of killing people, Arachiga Gamboa would also mutilate their bodies and hang them off bridges as a warning to his enemies. He also acquired a supernatural dimension, with some claiming you didn't just die at his hands. Your ordeal continued in the next world, owing to the terrible things he'd do to your corpse. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling very unsettled. This kind of behavior made him ideal to work for the Sinaloa cartel as a trusted and deadly assassin. He also acted as bodyguard to his old childhood neighbor Vicente Zambada Niebla, aka El Vicentillo. 
The role lasted till 2008, a notable year for Arachiga Gamboa and the Mexican organizations in general. Why? Because of a falling out within the ranks of the Sinaloa cartel. Arturo Beltran Leba was an influential member of the Sinaloa cartel. His nickname was El Mochomo, or the Desert Ant. He and his four brothers handled operations for the cartel. However, that was all about to change. In 2008, he was caught by the military. Believing El Chapo to be responsible for the situation, he and his brothers took their Beltran Leba organization, which had been in existence since the late 1990s, and went elsewhere. Meanwhile, Arachiga Gamboa arranged his own particular slice of the Sinaloa cartel action. Los Anthrax, or the Anthraxes, were deadly by name and even deadlier by nature. The enforcement arm of the Sinaloa cartel. They were founded by Arachiga Gamboa and Rene Velasquez Valenzuela. Their malevolent mission was to protect El Mayo and engage with his many enemies, including the Beltran Leba organization. 2008 was also the year we could have lost Arachiga Gamboa for good. He was attacked by a commando at a Culiacan car wash. He reportedly escaped, but a group member was shot dead. Cartel Wars Arachiga Gamboa's closeness to the Zambada family and his brutal skill set made him an invaluable part of the cartel. With various groups vying for control of territory, the power structure in these organizations can change rapidly. So it was that El Vicentillo went to prison after being arrested in early 2009. Arachiga Gamboa was given a more supervisory role in Culiacan City. Not that his occupation as a hitman went by the wayside. In 2013, he took part in a scene straight out of a movie. The setting is a birthday party at a banquet hall in Los Cabos, Baja California Sur, but not just any birthday party. This was a celebration for one Francisco Rafael Arellano Felix. The date is the 18th of October, and Francisco Rafael had turned 63, he's about to suffer an abrupt end, to be honest. Bizarre end. If you watch this clip closely, you'll spot his assassin. It isn't the guy who looks like a singer, by the way. That colorful clown figure crossing the shot is gearing up to shoot Francisco Rafael dead, and the identity of this clown, Jose Rodrigo Arachiga Gamboa, or to use his nickname, El Chino Anthrax, or the Chinese Anthrax. It was just one of many individuals he'd slain, but it was definitely one for the history books. The Los Anthrax group were taking the fight to the Sinaloa cartel's enemies, resulting in mayhem on the streets. When they weren't fighting the Beltran Leva, they were battling the Mexican military and other cartels, seeking to put an end to their deeply disruptive and bloody influence. As ever with these dangerous situations, something had to give. Going up against El Chino Anthrax was a frightening prospect, yet what goes up must come down. What led to the downfall of Arachiga Gamboa? Downfall. 2011 saw the assassination of Los Anthrax leader Francisco Arce Rubio, aka Pancho, in Culiacan. Alarmingly, this happened during a soccer match. A group called Los Mazatlecos arrived packing heat and shot Arce Rubio dealing a major blow against Los Anthrax. The attackers were the enforcement arm of the Beltran Leba, meaning that Arachiga Gamboa's team had been attacked by their opposite numbers. As you can imagine, revenge was shocking and brutal. Arachiga Gamboa was doing what he did best, meeting out terrible violence on his enemies. Yet opinion was reportedly going against him in the Sinaloa cartel. He wasn't the man he once was, not least due to his social media activity. It may seem seems strange that a hitman for the Mexican drug cartel would take to public platforms to show off. But that's precisely what Arachiga Gamboa did. He took care to blur his face whilst posing with his expensive cars and bling. Unfortunately, there was one detail he overlooked. Or maybe he didn't. Either way, it was a dead giveaway for law enforcers trying to establish who he was. What gave him away? His skull-shaped Los Anthrax ring. Despite his social media aliases, Arachiga 
Ichiga Gamboa drew too much attention to himself. The addition of tribute tracks only made him more visible. Yes, music was composed in his honor, complete with music videos. Two years after the death of Francisco Arce Rubio, El Chino Antrax wound up behind bars. Having received a tip-off that he was en route to the Netherlands, police caught him at Amsterdam Airport. Schiphol, he'd reportedly changed his appearance with minor plastic surgery, as well as traveling under a false name. It didn't fool authorities. Why? Because despite going to all that effort, Arachiga Gamboa kept that Los Antrax ring on his finger. Was this a total slip-up? Or was he wanting to proudly display his identity, little suspecting it would implicate him to that extent? He was soon extradited to the US. He'd been well and truly cornered. Though reportedly, Mexican officials were left out of the loop. By July 2014, Arachiga Gamboa was imprisoned on American soil. A couple of months earlier, his partner, Yuriana Castillo Torres, had been kidnapped and tortured before being killed. This must have been an absolutely devastating blow to the assassin and drug lord. By March 2015, he pled guilty to being part of the Sinaloa cartel and participating in drug shipments. He was eventually sentenced to seven years and three months in prison after spending six years in U.S. custody. Arachiga Gamboa had reportedly cut deals with the U.S. attorney. He'd snitched on the Sinaloa cartel, who realized they had an enemy within. Once that enemy was found to be El Chino Antrax. It was only a matter of time before he met his end. Death. Arachiga Gamboa was placed under house arrest in California on probation in March 2020. However, he made the fateful decision to return to Culiacan to live with family. Their home was then attacked on the night of May 14th that year. Inside was Arachiga Gamboa, together with his sister and her husband. El Chino Antrax was armed with an automatic assault rifle, and a shootout ensued which reportedly lasted till dawn. When the ammo ran out, the conflict ended. The family had to surrender, and they were all found dead the next day in a black SUV. Arachiga Gamboa was wrapped in cloth and had a plastic bag over his head. He was 39 at the time of his death. It hasn't been confirmed where the order to kill Arachiga Gamboa came from, though obviously the men who arrived that night were members of the Sinaloa cartel. The organization he'd been part of since he was a young man had taken revenge on one of their brightest and bloodiest stars. Want to know more about the Sinaloa cartel and the Mexican drug wars? Check out some of our other videos.